Welcome back to this episode of Trojan Time. I'm your host, Cole Arndorfer. Today, I have the privilege of sitting down with the current Trojan Athlete of the Week and my fiance, Sierra Adkins. Sierra has a unique story about how she started her sport and how she ended up at HLGU, how she persevered through a tough injury, and of course, how we first met. Don't go anywhere. That show starts now. Hey, Sierra. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So let's jump right in. The first question is, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what's, you know, your backstory? Um, so a little bit about me. I'm from a really small rural area down by Springfield, Missouri called Clever. Um, I did not start playing softball until I was 14 years old when I decided to raise my hand in my biology class. And she's like, does anybody know how to pitch? And I was like, yeah, me, totally. I had never pitched before. Um, found a pitching coach in October and I was pitching varsity games by March. Um, and then one day I woke up and my dad was like, Hey, I think you can like play in college. And I was like, no. And he was like, yeah. And then I found another pitching coach and played some travel ball. And then here I am now. Yeah. So tell me about a bit about your, uh, pitching coach. I know you really love Carissa. Um, I love Carissa. She's a big reason why I'm here. Um, now she's more than a pitching coach. Now she's a friend. Um, she supported me, uplifted me. Um, she's always believed in me just as much as my parents have or anybody else has that I could do this. And um, she always worked with me really hard to get better. <laughs> nice. So tell me a, bu- a bit about your recruiting process. Since you got such a late start in the sport, how did you manage to jumpstart that process and get straight into looking at colleges? Who helped you with that? Um, my dad helped me a lot with that. He took me to a lot of camps, got me a lot of exposure pretty early on, uh, probably my junior year before COVID happened. And then I had pretty much committed to a different university. And then when COVID happened, I lost my scholarship. Um, so I had to completely start over in November or December of our junior year in high school. <laughs> and Coach Hurst called me one day in January after I had told my dad I didn't want to play in college anymore and I just wanted to give up. He's like, have you ever heard of Hannibal LaGrange? And I was like, where is Hannibal? (laughs) And I came here. Yeah. So what ultimately led you to HLG? So after that initial contact with Coach Hurst, what actually got you here? Um, I just felt like God had called me to be here. Like I took a lot of college visits before I came here and this just felt right. It felt like home. It felt like I had a place to grow in Christ here and an ability to make relationships with people that I probably would not have made at a bigger college. Yeah, that's great. That's really what this school is all about. Honestly, that's what everybody really says is the best thing about this school. Um, So this fall, you had a fairly traumatic ankle injury at practice. How did you manage all of the emotions and stuff that came with that? Plot twist, I didn't manage them. But I have gotten better at dealing with it. Um, I just had to really work hard to know that this is still what I wanted to do. And I had to really like take my physical therapy seriously. And I had to like determine like, okay, if I want to pitch, I have to do this. And I'm not quite back 100% where I was, but I do think I'm pretty close. Yeah. And tell us how it happened. What uh, what was the actual injury that you had? So I completely tore two ligaments on the outside of my ankle. Um, I partially tore at the tendon that goes from your ankle bone all the way across. And I had three severe bone bruises all the way through the bones. Um, I got this injury by running around a cone in the outfield the second week of practice doing a drill we've probably done a thousand times (laughs) since my time at Hannibal LaGrange. (laughs) That's how it always happens, just always the normal drills that you never think will get you. (laughs) So you had to be in a boot and on crutches for a long time. How did you deal with maneuvering throughout your day with that it was horrible I live on the third floor of Lewis and trying to get up and down the stairs was horrible um Cole over here had to help me do my laundry once a week um the shower was a horrible situation I had to shower on the floor because I was non-weight bearing for eight weeks 
Um, people had to carry my backpack for me to class. I had to keep my foot up. My foot was so swollen for like six weeks, I couldn't feel my toes. That was really uncomfortable. And so now after you've made a full recovery, you threw a no hitter last week and you are the current Trojan athlete of the week. How did you manage to get back to a spot where, you know, you are just at the top of your game again? Um, not without lots of hard work, determination, prayer, and support from loved ones, coaches, really everyone was rooting for me. Um, I just had to find it in myself to get back to this point. It's very mentally challenging. Um, back on the top of my game, though, is just a mental thing. Like, I wanted this so bad, and I'm getting it. Yeah. So how's how's it feel to see all that hard work to recover paying off in these ways? Um, in a humble way, it's nice. It's rewarding to see that, like, my work is important, and, like, I am seen for how hard I've tried to get back and to be in this, but my injury does not define me. I am definitely more than that, and I feel like I would have deserved that even if I hadn't battled back. Definitely. So how does your faith play into not only trying to work through that injury, but just every day in your like playing abilities with softball, how does your faith work through that? Um, just like trusting that like God gave me these abilities to do this and it we God gives us sports to honor him, not to take away from him. And I feel like that's one thing that keeps me going is like I'm not playing for myself, I'm playing for him because he gave me the ability to do this. Right. Yeah. So changing gears just a little bit, you and I actually met on our first day moving into campus here. Do you want to tell the people that story? Oh, ha ha. We, we met before we got here. Um, we both came to here from a few hours away, so we had to spend the night, the night before, and the Holiday Inn down the road. And my family had gotten into the elevator, or your family, you and your mom were already in there. I don't I remember. I think you guys think were already we're in. we were already in there, yep. and then you got on. And Cole and my dad were in the same exact Hannibal LaGrange shirt. And my dad, embarrassing the crap out of me, decided to ask Cole if he was moving into Hannibal today. <laughs> and Cole's like, yeah, I am. And I'm going to be on the baseball team. And my dad was like, awesome. Sierra here, she's going to be on the softball team. You guys are going to be great friends. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> and I was bright red. And I was so embarrassed. And we ran off the elevator. And I was like, dad, I never want to see that guy ever again. That was so <laughs> embarrassing. So then as the day goes forward, uh, my parents moved me into my room and your parents moved you into your room. And then we did that thing that's like a cult and we sing around <laughs> the tree. And then my parents had already left and so had your parents. And you walk, they put us in the little NSO group wristbands and you walk up to me and you're like, hey, I think we're in the same group. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, not this guy again. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> um, that's how we met. That was my own perseverance story. I knew that you didn't really want to see me again, but I knew that I wanted to see you again. So, you know, I kind of made it happen. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and here we are, two and a half years, <laughs> years later. later. <laughs> <laughs> I always let you tell that story because you are a I lot do a better. better job than you do. You're a lot better at remembering all the little details than I am. It's okay. <laughs> so moving forward, what are some plans after uh graduation what are some goals that you're moving forward towards um something happening after graduation well except when I'm done with classes is we're getting married uh pretty excited about that mm -hmm. um I don't know where I'm going for grad school yet but I'm doing something in the med school whether it's biology research or pharmacy I don't really know yet wherever kind of God makes the door open is where we're gonna end up yep. uh, we're gonna have babies <laughs> have a house, <laughs> travel. Right, of course. What would, would be a piece of advice that you have for someone who's looking at coming to HLG for school? Um, a piece of advice I would have is to be outgoing and to come into the, coming to HLG with an open mind um, and just like high school is different than college and you're gonna need to make new friends and you can keep your ones at home too, but you're gonna need to make more friends and you just have to be open and receptive. And of course, you have to be open mind to see how God's gonna work in your life through your time here, whether it's a year, whether it's four years. Um, 
you just can't be closed-minded here because there's lots of good things happening. Yeah. I think that's all I have for you. Is there anything that you think that we missed? I do not think so. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast today. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. You're welcome. Thank you. That's our time for now. Special thanks to Sierra for taking the time to sit down and share her stories with us today. Thank you guys for listening and tune in next time for the next episode of Trojan Time. Until then, I've been Cole Arndorfer. Have a great day.